what's going on beautiful jellyfish it's tracy thanks for hanging out with me today and today we're going to be talking about ecoria as well as commander 2020 i'm a little bit late to the game and um honestly i don't really know why i'm a little bit late to the game maybe i was like waiting until like my thoughts sunk in a little bit more i was kind of like thinking about it a little bit also i had a couple of videos pre-filmed and whatnot so i was kind of trying to get those up first but um yeah just yeah, we're going to be chit-chatting about these two things, and uh, just kind of like right off the bat, not a massive fan of either the Commander 2020s and the Aquaria and uh, set, and I'm going to kind of like go into like why and kind of like my thoughts, but um, if you're here for a rave review of them, you're not going to, you're not going to get that from me, so I kind of just wanted to talk about them and then also some card highlights, and to be honest, um, I feel like truthfully, regardless of how I feel about any set, there's always something that I do like to note that there is something that is a highlight, um, of course, so let's kind of first start talking about Commander 2020 products. Now, um, I think my overall problem with these is truthfully not so much Commander 2020 specifically. I actually just have a problem, I would say, with Commander products in general. And um, I guess my kind of rationale behind this is, well, I... First off, I should say, I see both sides of the spectrum. I understand if you are a newer player into Commander, which I am going to be doing a video on like just getting into Commander because I got requested to do that video and I think it's a really good topic. But honestly, if you are someone who is new into Commander, grabbing a pre-con is a great way to get into the game. And I'm not arguing against that at all. For me personally, I don't need a pre-constructed deck. And that's not me being like, ugh master deck builder over here. That's not what I'm saying. It's just, I think it is more towards, I guess it's more marketed towards newer players, which again, there. Th this is not me saying we should not do commander pre-cons or anything like that. I guess my kind of thoughts behind this and what I don't like about it is I don't like the notion of like you buy the pre-con and then like, boom, that's it. You have your deck. And then I, what I guess what I, what I fear is that you have something like Duretti deck, like whenever that happened and basically everyone built that or like Sahili, for example, because artifact decks tend to get out of hand very quickly as a recurring theme that I've noticed. And I'm sure a lot of you have noticed too. So I guess my overall thing with this is truthfully, it's not the commander 2020 that I'm not particularly a huge fan of. Um, it has nothing to do with themes. It's just, like as a whole it's just really truthfully not a product for me is what I guess I would like to say I don't want to see everyone buy the same deck and then just boom have a deck and I think if you truthfully do take it take some cards from it and then make it your own I think that's fine also too and I this is just a me thing but to be honest I'm just a singles gal I just really enjoy that just sounded really weird I'm a singles gal <laughs> what this is the one that's so weird but um no like it's just I prefer to buy singles and that's just kind of my jam so a lot of these sets again it's just ne not necessarily a product for me um what are my other notes about this oh and I guess too one thing that I will say is my my thoughts behind commander 20 the, the commander 2020 pre-cons is and, and just again commander pre-cons in general is that I prefer getting a lot of my commander cards from a set like conspiracy or battle bond those sets tend to appeal to me a little bit more than something like this and I know that battle bond and conspiracy are both very like draft heavy like the whole point of those is drafting but honestly there were some great gems in battle bond you got to see a lot of reprints also i'm a foilaholic everybody knows this i love foil magic cards and you don't get that opportunity in commander 2020 that's not the point of those pop products and i get it it's just again it's just not truly a product for me um so yeah i would say that i prefer like if if like conspiracy 3 had come out instead of commander 2020 i would just be so hyped but again i'm not saying that we should get rid of this product or anything it's just not a product for me like i'm just gonna leave it off at that um, okay, but I do want to talk about card highlights because there are a couple of things, not super, again, there's not a ton of things, but I am excited to see the reprint of Arcane Signet. I think this is a great card and this has been the card that's been on my wish list for a minute. I need to pick up a ton of these, like I literally need to buy like 10 
and then Paul needs 10 so we're just gonna need like 20 of these like we just need a ton of this this card and it's only ever been printed in the commander sets so I definitely want to pick this card up um and this has just been a card that's been on my wish list regardless it's just getting reprinted which is very exciting and I do think that these are I do think that this product is gonna sell well so I think that there'll be a lot of these cards on the market and then um I am excited from I don't remember the name of the exact deck but the one that's red and blue Maybe it's the cycling one. I'm not 100% sure. I get them all confused in my head, but there's a couple of cards from Riku in there that I'm really excited about. And um, one card in particular that I'm excited about is Twinning Staff. I think that card is really good and I'm really excited about that. And a couple of other cards that I'm not mentioning, but um, I think as a whole, I might pull some cards for Riku possibly. Um, and oh, and I guess one more thing that I, I, I should mention that um, I think has been really interesting during this quarantine time that a lot of people where I, I feel like it's a little bit more divided, where I feel like a lot of people are very invested in magic right now. They're very much building new decks because they don't necessarily have that social aspect. Um, and especially with Commander, right? Like, you know, for people who uh, are playing magic online, it's like a little, it's different. But to be honest, it's always different when you're playing magic online because it's like you're, it's different when you're playing on a computer compared to when you're playing with other people. And Commander is a very social game. And there's so many reasons why I love Commander, but the social aspect is a really huge part of it. And the fact that a lot, since we're not able to do that now, um, I think a lot of people are building decks in place of that. I'm not one of those people right now. I'm actually not really having to do anything with magic, I would say, really at all. This is probably the closest that I get every week to interacting with the game is making videos about it. So um, I would say my interactions with the game are pretty limited right now. And um, yeah, so I'm kind of, I think that's one other reason too where I'm a little bit more turned off from this product just because it's not something like I'm interested in really trying out a new commander deck. With that being said, I have been talking about building Riku for a minute and I'm definitely going to. And honestly, I was actually probably going to be building it around this time anyway, um, even before all this stuff started to happen and then all this stuff happened and then I'm like, well, there's kind of no real point to building a commander deck. I guess I realistically could and I'm probably going to within the next couple months, but uh, we'll get there when we get there kind of thing, so... Oh, sorry if I'm touching my hair a lot. I am. Um, I put it down because I thought that it would look nice, and I'm just like, it's just soft. It's gotten like super long too, which is like really interesting because it just feels like it just like grew all of a sudden. Anyways, um, okay, let's talk about Ikoria now, and I. I feel like my re reasons and rationale for behind Commander 2020 were very sound, logical, and I feel like I don't necessarily have the same experience with Ikoria about why I'm not a huge fan of this set, and um, I, other than maybe just, it's a lot of big stuff, and I'm just not a huge fan of that. There's a lot of like big massive dinosaurs and all that kind of stuff, and it's just flavor-wise not my jam and I don't really know if I can explain a lot more than that about why I'm not the biggest fan of this set but I'm just not and um yeah that's all I can really say it's just it's not really um it's not really definitely for me I do think though that um, flavor wise I think there's a lot of really fascinating um, ways to look at this like I think mutate as a mechanic is really interesting and I think it's flavor wise makes a ton of sense I'm not really like the biggest fan of mutate to be honest it's not really a mechanic that I feel like I'd really see myself using um, but I, I, I guess Again, I think a lot of like these sets are not designed with commander in mind or modern in mind. They're designed for standard and they're designed for draft and and it's that's the kind of a angle that they're going for. So I think for that reason, I think that this set does a good job and I honestly think that if this set whenever it does, I do think that this would be a really fun set to draft. Um with that being said, I guess I don't necessarily see a lot for myself personally the EDH impact. What I mean by that is I'm not saying that other people will not pull a lot of cards for commander here. What I'm saying is I don't see a lot of cards that I myself personally want. And again, this is just a me personally thing. Just like how I feel about Commander. There's not a lot of value for me, but there doesn't mean that there's not a lot of value for you and other people. And I think that's great. It's just not a huge a huge thing for me, which is fine because honestly, you're not going to like every product and I totally understand that. Um, this is just not really my cup of tea and that's totally okay. Sorry, my phone was buzzing 7,000 times. Um, but 
with that being said, um, I do want to talk about a couple of highlights. Paul actually did purchase a box for us. Um, and when I say us, I mean truthfully for him because honestly, again, I don't really see a lot of cards that I really want in here. And again, nothing is really sparking to me like, oh my god, I want to build this type of deck. And um, that's just kind of like my, my first impressions of this set. But a couple of highlights that I do want to mention. The first thing is, of course, Glimmer Bell because it's a jellyfish and it's also an elemental jellyfish and also on a side note just wanted to give you the 411 today that we busted out some fun facts at work and your girl doesn't really have a lot of cool facts I just I don't I don't know a bunch of obscure things and honestly I probably do I just I can't think of it off the top of my head it was like what's a what's a really cool fact you know and I was like I don't know anything like I I have no idea but anyways I did give a jellyfish fact because jellyfish queen over here didn't tell my coworkers that I was a jellyfish queen because they'd probably think I was weird but anyways um glimmer bell hyped about this card it's a jellyfish really excited maybe one day we'll have enough cards to make a jellyfish deck just saying if they did secret lord jellyfish I think that'd be pretty rad hydrate crisis is a great magic card just saying just saying also Wizards of the coast still waiting on my um on my preview card and to be honest this could have been my preview card just saying just saying I say that in every preview video and I still haven't gotten a preview card. So I say that in every set overview and I still don't have a preview card. One day. One day. We'll get there. Hopefully. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that card I'm very excited about and I'm just excited to own a foil because I feel like once that card comes out, I'm just going to get 7,000 copies because all my friends are going to be like, Tracy, jellyfish, and that's just what's going to happen. Um, another card that I'm very excited about for this set are is the Crystal Line. I don't really know what the word for that is. The, the set, the, the set in the set that's like Inception, I don't really know. But anyways, I'm very excited about these cards because they are like uh, signet type of things, which I think is really cool. They're three mana, you add those um, to your pool. Definitely going to be picking up um, these for my commander decks. Really, really think these are very good. And um, this was really exciting. And also, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't, do these cards exist, but then they don't have cycling? Can someone let me know down below that maybe these cards already exist, but they like just don't have the cycling? Let me know. But anyways, excited about this card. And pretty much the last thing that I kind of wanted to wrap up with this set that I'm really excited about, and kind of just as a general note, I just kind of wanted to shout out Wizards of the Coast because their promo slash variants have been just on point. They're calling these variant cards, um, and, and there'll be a picture on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. But honestly, Wizards has just been truthfully knocking it out of the park with the these showcase ask whatever you want to call them the the different type of cards they've just been knocking it out of the park honestly um with that and again even though a lot of these it's they're not applicable to me not really going to be picking a lot of them up they're beautiful like they just they like truthfully i think um oh my god what was the set with all the fairy tale themed because i forgot throne of eldraine i i can't I cannot keep magic set names in my head. It's like not a something that I can like keep in my head. Just can't do it. But Throne of Eldraine, I feel like Throne really like was was one of the best examples of all the showcase type stuff they did was just phenomenal and stunning. And this I feel like is just another example. They've just been doing such a great job. And the cards that I'm particularly really interested in are these tri lands. I think these are rad. Like I'm so excited about these. And to be honest, even though I really don't care a lot about the set I'm really excited about these and I think these are awesome and I cannot wait to pick them up in foil full arts and yes they're going to be expensive but I want them these are great I honestly don't think I'm going to need as many of these as I feel like I'm originally thinking of but anyways these are great they're really really stunning I really like the whole set of them and I'm definitely going to be picking these up and I'm assuming the next set will have the remaining crystals and we'll have wait are there only five are there only five of these? Because those have all the colors. Because there's only five. I, I, math is really hard. I can't do that math right now. But anyways, excited about these cards. I think they're really rad. And the last card that I'm excited for, wow, interestingly, this is also a land. And that is the card Bonders Enclave. This card is awesome. So uh, if you don't know anything uh, about me, hi, I'm Tracy. And my favorite thing to do in Magic is draw cards. It's best part of the game and so anyways that I can draw cards in any situation I'm a huge fan of and uh, even when like Nexus are on board still a huge fan because I get to draw cards don't care that I hate damage just get to draw cards anyways this card 
makes me draw cards. Love it. So it says draw a card, and you can only activate this ability if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, but here's my rationale behind this of why I think you can kind of still get away with this card, even if it is a little bit more limited. First off, I don't think this card belongs in every deck. Period. But what I feel like this, so this does belong into is decks where you are running power four or greater. And my envision with this card is very similar to Ark of Araska, which is one of my favorite cards. And I get a lot of flack for it because honestly, it's a lot of mana to draw a card. But I think what people need to realize is that this is like a utility land. And I'm a huge fan of cards that do multiple things. I think anytime there's just like a multiple thing, I'm a huge fan of it because it does multiple things because if you need the mana, it's there. But if you don't need the mana, you can draw cards with it. Again, it's a little bit situational to be honest. And if someone board wipes and you have no cards in your hand, you're like, okay, this is kind of sad. But what I will say, I think this card works really well in, in decks that have commanders, maybe that have like um, that uh, power four or greater because then you can kind of always sort of really draw cards. But anyways, I'm still, I'm, I'm a really big fan of this card. I don't think this card will be like crazy insane expensive or anything like that um because again i think a lot of people are gonna be like oh it's situational kind of whatever but uh let's be honest there's a lot of situational type of cards um needless to say i am really excited about this and i'm definitely going to be picking up that in addition to the other um they're calling them variants which reminds me of comic books but the different variants for these so and also i was also going to talk about the promos and all that kind of stuff but i looked and looked and looked and i could not find it so i wondered if they had pulled that information because of all the stuff that's been going on and they're postponing the event and stuff like that. I'm not 100% sure, but um, I don't remember seeing that, so I don't remember any of the promos or anything like that. So uh, hopefully those will come out and we'll get the chance to see that because I'm always super excited looking at the different promos that they do and stuff like that. While I've been talking, I need water. Anyways, uh, I think that was everything that I wanted to touch base with you guys on, just talking about... Um, talking about uh, Commander stuff and um, and Ikoria and stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, like I said, even though they're not products for me, um, that's not to say that I don't, you know, they're still fine products and there's still definitely gems and things like that in there. And uh, who knows, maybe as time goes on, there will be some stuff that, you know, we open and that we have this card laying around. And I'm like, hey, I'll try this and whatnot. And um, yeah, I think that was everything that I wanted to check in with you guys in this video. Um, yeah, definitely let me know what you guys are excited for or maybe your kind of thoughts about Ikoria slash Commander 2020 and let me know in the comments below. Like my video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye!